Hi everybody and welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel and podcast. Uh, we are here back with another match reaction. Match reaction which is a little bit different to the ones which we've been used to delivering recently. Um, I am your host Chris, joined by Scott, Matthew and Ian tonight. Um, Scott, I'm going to come to you first. Newcastle have, for the third season in a row, left the FA Cup uh, in the first round which we enter in. Scott, You've got the team sheet in front of you there. Eight changes made to, to yep. the, since the last game. Talk with through them, mate. So it's it was a big clear out today for Eddie Howe. It was. It was a massive clear out. So, I mean, obviously we talked about this on the preview about Martin Dubravka, whether or not he would play or not. Um, there was a few comments saying that if he does play, we can't then get rid of him in the January transfer window, which we didn't really think about. But it seems like he's staying because he started and that's his two, games a se- uh, two teams a season. Um, so you've got Dubravka, you've got Mankio, Lascelles, and you've obviously got Sven Botman, who's been featuring quite regularly. Jamal Lewis, Sean Longstaff again, quite a regular feature. Elliot Anderson, Joe Linton, Matt Ritchie, Jacob Murphy. And then we actually saw Alexander Isak get a start, which I think surprised everybody towards the, uh, the before kickoff. I, th- I think a lot of people thought he would feature. Maybe he would be on the bench and, and come on should we need him. Um mm. And, and if you think so, so Eddie Howe, that would have been a better the better option, but there we go. Eddie Howe, uh, obviously pre-match, he said that uh, Isaac would not feature for the full 90 minutes. Uh, it would be um, yeah. just just a chunk of the game which he would be um, receiving and saying it would be an intense period that he would be uh, having out there on the field, though. Um, he did get two chances, uh, but before we get to, to the likes of the chances, um, if I start this off, I was expecting a stronger side than that, if, I, if I'm going to be brutally honest. Um, Manny, were you expecting a stronger side or were you expecting uh, a lot of changes as eight? I think it was hard to have any expectations, really. I think, like we spoke about in the preview, that this is sort of not unprecedented for us, but with a big game looming on Tuesday and a very important game the following Sunday against Fulham, um, there were going to be changes just how, to how many, not too sure. And when I saw the, the lineup, I still thought it was a strong enough lineup. I still thought there was some quality in there as much as Isak we hadn't seen him play for three months um, but you still like to think you've got enough on the pitch and, and I still think we probably did or should have um, so it didn't really surprise me to see those changes uh, we even spoke about Matt Ritchie possibly being involved and even Dubravka so um, it didn't surprise me as much because there was no names out of left field being um, included there mm. but Like you said there Ian that, that Matt said that you expected that the lads that were actually fielded, uh, the starting 11, were strong enough um, to, to win that game. As the game went on, I think quality started to show. Well, the lack of quality compared to the lads that we're used to seeing in the Premier League games. Yeah, that's right. I think this game, by all accounts, um, it just sort of solidifies what I think a lot of Newcastle fans know is that that is where we struggle is is the, the lack of depth that we're having with squad. That being said, and I agree with Matty, I think the, the squad that he put out probably should have should have had enough quality to to um to beat a, a lower a, a team in the, the lower um, leagues than what we are but it's just just one of them games where frustrating it is we've seen I think in the the previous cup games where you make sort of more than three four five changes that's when you start losing the the, the chemistry between players that that to really sort of put where we are in the league and, and give those good performances that we've had. But I say it's just, just one of those days, unfortunately. Yeah, like you said, Scott, it, it has been very similar to the, the previous cup games which we've seen. Um, this this the, the side which was, was uh, fielded tonight, the, you could tell they hadn't played a, a long period with each other. And I think just before we went live, they, well, before we started recording, you, you got some stats in front of you in regards to minutes played. By the lads. Yeah, I just, you could tell that there was a bit of, I know we used this word a couple of weeks ago, a bit of rust on some of the players who haven't featured week in, week out, and maybe haven't even featured month in, month out. I mean, um, Mankio has only played 76 minutes up until kickoff today, Lewis 51, Richie 92, and then you've got Lascelles, Anderson, and Isak on over 200. Um, I mean, You've got to look at that in perspective when you think, you know, that totals to just under a thousand minutes. And Kieran Trippier has played seventeen hundred minutes this season. 
So you've got the 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 factor of them not playing many minutes, and that doesn't even include Martin Dubravka, who there wasn't any stats for because he's been at Man U, so I couldn't find that uh, quick enough. So, you, you know, you, you're not getting many minutes, so you are a bit rusty when it comes to match ready. But also there's that added thing of, like we mentioned before, they haven't played together. I mean, the commentator has brought up today, that's the first time that back four or back five, if you include the uh, keeper, have ever played with each other. And and it's it, it you could tell. Like he, I think even in pre-season, we didn't line up with that because Mankia would have been injured. So, you know, mm. our cup performances, even though we're in, you know, where we are in the Caribou Cup, they haven't been great this season. And and it, I think it just exposes our um, lack in depth. But also, I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Sheffield Wednesday. Um, no. They were outstanding today. They played, you know, well, we talked about, you know, us not, being not letting Arsenal play in the reaction to Arsenal and, and how their fans didn't like it. They did the same to us. They just came and bullied us. They were picking up every loose ball and, and they were just they were just the better side. And sometimes you just gotta, you know, take your hat off and just say, look, best team won on the night. Um yeah, you're hundred percent right. You can say about it. Hundred percent correct. I think Sheffield Wednesday, the they absolutely dominated a lot of that game. And that's not to say that we didn't have chances because we had a lot of them. Um, yep. But I think, like you said, loose balls, they wanted that more. Uh, I honestly think that they did. Um, you, you could say to a certain degree. And, and like I said, Matty, we still had chances. We really did. But we we were very sloppy at times, giving them chance after chance, just giving the ball away so easy. And, and the two names, which, which I'm going to start off with, are Lewis and Jacob Murphy. Just that, that left-hand side just didn't gel. No, I mean, it didn't. Whether that's down to, you know, the rustiness or the lack of game time, like Scott's just alluded to. But again, I just want to echo what Scott said because you don't want to um, play down Sheffield Wednesday's performance too much. Um, they've given us a dose of medicine today that we're just going to have to take. Um, I wouldn't say they dominated the game. They just implemented their game plan effectively. Um, and we um, sort of presented them some chances that they've taken. Um, for me, um, the second goal... It's it's our mistake, but it's it's a great it's a great finish, and the first goal, um, as much as it was offside, I was offside as well. It was it was a decent goal. I mean, there was good performances all around the park for Sheffield Wednesday. Um, you know, the goalkeeper has made some good saves. The centre half McGuinness was a fantastic, fantastic all all game pretty much. Volks in the in the middle of the field sent Anderson and Longstaff for a a hot dog, and in, in the build up of the first one, and obviously we spoke about Windass and he's, and he's punished us as well. But back to what you said about Lewis and Murphy, yeah, they weren't gelling, but I think you know you could say the same about the likes of Anderson. Um, I'm sure yeah. we'll get onto what you know his sort of contribution or could have been contrib- contribution, but he played the ball through slackly in the first ten minutes. We just looked like there were there was some nervy nervy passing, um, some just just sort of maybe a bit of arrogance thinking that could just pass the ball into areas without even looking where the opposition players are. Um, there, was, there was a lot of stuff, but I mean, we, we had 77, 76% possession, 76% possession, the massive majority of the ball, and we still carved out opportunities. And like we'll get on to, um, we've only got ourselves to blame for not still at least taking this to a replay. But again, Sheffield Wednesday, fair play and hats off to them. Yeah, hundred um, percent. If we go through some some of the chances w- which were created and, and missed, that, I think the one which you were talking about, Matty, to, to go across the Ewing, what was the Eddie Anderson one where it falls out of in the box and he he should be burying that all day long. Yeah, should have took the net off. Uh, the, the keeper, fair play, has done well. He's made himself big, but he's he's got literally the whole uh, his right hand side of the goal to to have a look at um, and you should be burying it but whether that comes down to, to um, he's not, maybe he's not been in that position before um, hold on just because he did break up just before he came to us he did say uh, this is Anderson's yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. About. yeah. thank god yeah, yeah, for that yeah. I just with, with, I was met with silence I was like I'm hoping he's not meaning he's yeah. no I think we're all <laughs> still in shock again that's all it is mate that's all it is <laughs> Um, yeah, whether it comes down to he's, maybe he's not been in that kind of position before, but uh, he should be burying it, in, 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 as far as I'm concerned. Um, but uh, we had a, again had enough chances. I think Joe Linton hit, hit one over. Richie had one in the first half, and then another one in the second. 
and I'm sure you'll you'll come to it the, the Chris Wood chance in the second half. But um, I think Isaac took his. He looked quite lively. I know obviously he, his first game back done better with a header. I thought, but again, it's another really good save by the keeper. Um, so you need to give credit where it's due in terms of the keeper. He's, he's, first half, I thought he did quite well um, in, in keeping Isaac out for his two chances. It's something which we've seen quite a lot in the cup games so far this season where keepers are having absolute blinders against her. Yeah. Uh, Matty, you, you mentioned in the group um, Isaac's chance, saying that it was a half chance he could do better, but obviously the keepers pulled off a great save. Mm-hmm. Um, looking back at it now, has the opinion changed or should he be doing better with that one? Um, look, I me, mean, what I said, I mean, I said it was probably half a, an opportunity missed like a, and, a, and half a good save. Um, it sort of came at the keeper and near his body, but it's still, it's a point blank-ish header and, and it's a good save. Um, Isaac's been out um, for three months, so I don't want to judge him too harshly. Um, we, I did have a little bit of an exchange of words in the WhatsApp group with uh, Mark Walker of this parish um, about that Anderson chance. For me, it's an absolute sitter. Um, I'm I with know, you. I'm I know with the keep. I know. I know the keeper saved it, and I don't want to go in too hard on any of the players who played today, including a certain Kiwi. Um, but um, I don't. I just don't know how a professional footballer misses from there. Um, it's it's I'm sure Eddie Anderson's gonna be going to bed at night with that just reeling through his head. He's gonna think he, he's probably just thought and he's that close, he just has to hit it on target and it's in. Um mm. but I really did think it was going to one one then. Um and unfortunately it didn't. So yeah, big miss for me. Um, you know, big moments like that, uh change games. But again, we had another opportunity to take it to a replay. So Chris just get us out of misery and talk about it because I'm just going to be sick if yeah so Scott uh, <laughs> Matty's mentioned there that Elliot Anderson will be thinking about that missed chance all night I think Chris Wood's going to be thinking about his for a lot longer he's going to be having nightmares about that Newcastle break really well and, and they do. Th- that passage of play really really well Joe Linton does great who I thought Joe Linton had a, had a decent game couple of mistakes but yeah. I think overall great game for Joe Linton today. he controlled a lot in that midfield area um, yeah, but Chris Wood, I think the commentator actually said, What have you done, Chris Wood? I mean, first of all, the pass from Trippier was oh, outstanding excellent. to hit it the way he hit it with the player so close to him and to <laughs> just find Joe Linton was class. Uh, Joe Linton is obviously running with the ball, and you think, you know, there's 2v1, he manages to find the pass and keep Chris Wood on side. Uh, and well, Chris Wood keeps himself on side, but the pass, you know, plays him on. And you just look at it and you just think, you've got time to take a touch. You don't need to take a touch. You just need to hit the target. And he, he, he just, just skies it over the bar. And I think it, it sums up, for me, Chris Wood in front of goal for Newcastle United. Um, it's you know he's been great, hold a play and all that sort of stuff. And and as an overall player, yes, he's been he's been great for us. And I think the commentator said he's featured in all but one game for us this season, which I didn't realise actually. No, so uh, you know he's 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 playing some minutes for her. Um, but I mean, it doesn't even work the keeper. You've got to at least, you know, make the keeper make a save or, or do whatever you can. And he, it's I, think I, don't, know, I don't know if it was the fact that the. Put... The commentator says you could put a goal on top of that goal, and it still misses. So missed, That's yeah. how bad it was. I mean, he's for me, for me, Zealand. maybe he prefers rugby. You know who? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's the it's the it's they're the type of chances that you see. You they'll be practicing stuff like that in training all the time. The ball coming here on your good foot to put it in the opposite corner. Yeah, and for I just I've. I want him to do well in front of goals so badly because, like Scott said, he has played a big part in this renaissance since January last January. Mm. Um, Huge part in that, only... that nine-game run that went on last season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like people, I've, I've, uh, you know, I know a lot of people who don't support Newcastle United, and they'll tell me how bad he is, and you know, I'll just sit there and go, "Well, you don't watch that ninety minutes of football, Newcastle's football every 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 weekend," and I do, and I know what he contributes to the team. However, you know, I'm going to struggle to defend him consistently if that's what he does in front of goal because at the end of the day he's a forward he's a striker he's a centre forward and as much as you want him to you know to graft his ass off which he does even his 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 his, his, his bring he's bring the ball down today and his, his knockoffs and his layoffs they were out like he almost caused a chance for Chef Wed because of it was like a heavy pass back to, to midfield 
And he just didn't have a good game, and that just sort of put a really shitty rotten cherry on top of a shit cake uh, for for his second half <laughs> performance. Um, I just I just hope he it doesn't affect him too much. But again, he we saw something similar in the um, cup game, even though it was offside. It got laid across to him, and he just he just spooned it over. I just don't know why. I mean, I, I'm no centre forward. You know, I, I'm not a good football player. I just watch the stuff and you know give my opinion. But why is he not putting your head over it at least? That's what you get told all the time. You know, why are you leaning back? It was just, it was, it's going to be something that's going to run through my head when I'm going to sleep at night, let alone Chris Woods. I might have to get some of those fucking balloons that he took before. Do you think, <laughs> um, with with obviously Isak coming back, Wilson being the number one choice, do you think he's maybe he's just thinking to himself, I'm never going to get a game for here and, and like, I'm going to be, a, you know, gonna be I'm going to be a, going to be a two bit, two bit player now and maybe he's, Given up a little bit because it, it did seem that way a little bit for me today that Chris Ugh. Wood just didn't put in form. However, don't everything you said before there, Manny, we said about Joe Linton t- like last season and the season before. So maybe mm, we should so move him to centre midfield and see how he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's put him centre mid, yeah, and just let him kick fuck out of people. Yeah, um, he's tall. Put him in goal. No, nah, I think I think Chris Wood. Look, he he, he wouldn't have been thinking. I'm going to cement myself in folklore and just twat this over the bar. Um, I just think, you know, he's just probably lacking confidence in that side of his game, but I just don't see it getting any better at the moment. Um, I've always said he's used to playing with a, a, a strike partner. I don't know if that just sort of heaps more pressure on him being the only source for goals when he is playing in the team or he's, he's seen as the only centre forward, sorry. But um, yeah, Callum Wilson buries that every day of the week and I think Isak does as well. But hey, yo, like I said, let's just take our medicine and move on. Yeah, uh, Ian Eddie Howe took a big gamble tonight with, with those changes. Um, the, I think she mentioned it after after the game as well, saying that it's a big risk. Um, risk that Eddie Howe thought was one worthy of taking, and probably so. Like like we've said on there, we should, probably should have won that with that team that's on there. Um, do you think looking at that now and that performance, do you think that might make the owners and management look at the transfer window a little bit different? It's. I mean, the, the lack of depth is is plain for everyone to see. I just, I don't, it, it's, I think with the position that we're in in the Premier League and then the quarterfinals, potentially a semi final of a, a, the League Cup, it's quite a precarious position. Do the, do the just think, fuck it and go for it and try and bring in that bit of quality? Not, not sort of five, six, seven players by any means, but maybe a little bit more than what we're going to. Um, or do the thing, you know, it is the players that we've got have got with this far will reassess in the summer it's 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 not a it is a great position to be in i don't i don't mean by that but it's it's an awkward position to be in because you you don't know whether to stick or twist um i definitely think they need more quality obviously it's one less game that we've got to play it's one less competition that we're in we can actually focus on trying to achieve the the best position in the league and in the league cup and i think possibly the the team that he's picked today, he, he's maybe he's had his his eye on the the cup on Tuesday, um, and almost seen it as free swing, in in effect because he, he's given players a chance to prove themselves, and if they get through, they'll, they'll possibly get another chance. If they don't, then he'll just go back to his his full strength squad, which I'm, is what I'm hoping he will do for the for the game on Tuesday. Yeah, so so we did see some of the, the top lads come in there, Scott, towards the end of the game. I think the last twenty five, maybe thirty minutes. So. They got so so. Yeah. Miggy comes on. Bruno comes on along with Joe Willock as well. That's when the game changed. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Well, the, the game changed as soon as Kieran Trippier came on. He took that corner and was scored, and it was just it was just kind of from there. But yeah, you know, you you bring on those three, <laughs> you'd expect the game to change. And if if it didn't, you'd be asking serious questions of why it didn't change. But I thought Bruno and and, and Joe Linton in that middle. I think it's one of the first times I saw Bruno, Joe Linton and Willick all together because it's normally Longstaff. And I was surprised that Longstaff came off, uh, to be mm-hmm. honest, when when the uh, when the substitutes happened. But uh, they linked up well. I thought, um, you know, Bruno was playing some great passes, as he always does. He was he was controlling the ball. He's playing a bit deeper than normal. Um, he, he was, you know, in that number six role as opposed to the eight role. And I think Willick had that, that more freedom of, of in front of the... Uh, in front of the the central defence or just behind uh, Chris Wood, um, 
I thought Miggy was a little bit off. I didn't think he had the best of games, but I think Miggy was just trying maybe a bit too hard. And, and you see that, you saw that with his shot, you know, when he, he, he came on and he cut in and he thought, oh, here we go. And he takes a shot and it, it again, it flies over the, over the, over the goal. Um, yeah, it was, I, I think for, for me, the only, we, we talk about the tactics and the picking of the team. The only thing for me is I would have probably have started Chris Wood and brought on Isak as an impact if we needed him as opposed to the other way around the way that he's done it. Because, you know, if we get to that half time and, and we're 2-0 down, Eddie Howe could make that change. And Isak would have probably finished some of those uh, chances that we've had. It's all ifs and buts, you know. Um, the one thing that I think maybe has had an effect on his squad selection, his team selection, was Leicester's team selection this morning uh, or this, this afternoon because they picked a... A slightly lesser squad, which which you know you had the likes of Jamie Vardy playing and Iosi Perez playing and so forth, which maybe's made you think, okay, they're resting players for Tuesday, so we're going to have to rest some players for Tuesday because they're going to be have that little bit extra maybe at the week uh, in the in the midweek. But um, who knows? Only Eddie Howe knows that, that the answer to that question really. Mm. Uh, one of the things I, I want to talk about just before we call it uh, an end of this one is the the rumours circulating in the last twenty four hours. Matty, about Alan St. Maxwell. I'm not going to give it much entertainment because we know it's pretty much bullshit. Um, so Saint has an illness, so, so this is why he wasn't in the, the match day, day squad and he didn't travel mm-hmm. with the team. Why do we see this every single year where, as a fan base, we're trying to turn on one of our players and it's always Alan St. Maxwell? It, it's a, at a point now where fans have got a very short memory? Um, I don't want to speak for all of them, you know? I mean... A proportion, let's just say. What's the... I don't know what the proverb is. It's something about... I was talking about cake and eating it on the last one, so I don't want to butcher this one. And it was it's something about shouting the loudest fucking sounds like you shout the loudest or something. <laughs> Nailed but, um, <laughs> all right, George. But, but. You, know, you, you know what I mean, don't you? But like, I just you know people who get, get a bit of steam on Twitter. It, I don't, you don't, I don't think they reflect a fan base. Whether it's you know twenty, thirty people, I, I, you know, I do make the mistake of looking at the comments on certain things, and there's people saying he's finished or he doesn't buy into Eddie Howe's way of you know what he wants to instill at Newcastle. And again, I think that's all bu- that's all bullshit. Um, I'm a massive believer in watching body language and the way that the players interact with each other after wins and losses. And it never seems like Alan St. Maximin isn't a part of a, like a tight knit part of that group. Um, he's still a valuable player. I know he can be inconsistent. I know he can be frustrating. But um, end of the day, he's probably just had a, a bad chesty cough. And you know, Addy Howes just said, "Yeah, keep yourself at home. We've got a couple of big games coming up." So, and someone's decided to sort of spin a yarn about that. Um, I don't believe. I don't think the lad who shared it on Twitter necessarily was trying to start any shit or anything. But it is what it is. I don't. I, I know what you mean. We sometimes try to find scapegoats, and I don't think this this is this is a type of situation for a scapegoat as such. But yeah, I think it's just a bit of. Shite, really. Um, you know, he's he's a massive player for us, and I'm looking forward to seeing him contributing again. So, yeah, just draw a line under it. He's ill. Never mind. Yeah. No one was he, saying this about Callum. Posted... Yeah, exactly on Instagram. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he posts on Instagram saying always always supporting the lads or something along those lines. So, I think it came out afterwards that he was in the, the training session this morning. I'm guessing it was just a light training session. Um, then after that is when. Um, mm. His illness arrived, um, so so he's been there throughout the preparation for this game. Um, so this rumor of a bust up, I'm, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it at all. I don't think I am as well. But then again, we never know. We never know. But I, I just I just don't think it's it's the crack. Um, there will end up eventually. I'm sure being some sort of, you know, there is. The, it's not going to be all happy families forever. But, it happens um, at every club, every single club across the Every league. single club. And it's whether it gets leaked out or not. I know we've had it in the past from the Rafa, you know, when Lascelles, you know, allegedly put Diame right and he ended up turning into Iniesta. So that was good. Um, so it was, um, yeah, it's just it's just one of those things in football and we just don't have to read into them too much because whether you like it or not, today hurts. Like it hurts, you know, you have to take medicine and, and it's, it's, I know it's only our first loss in. God knows how long is it, Scott? Correct me. Four months. 
four months. It's our first loss in four months. If it's you know it's our first goal we've conceded in you know ages. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not great, but at the end of the day, we're still riding the crest of a wave. We're still having a fantastic season. Tuesday's a massive game. Don't get me wrong. If we lose that, then it's it's it it's, it continues a bad feeling. But again, you could be knocked out of the cup on Tuesday and be knocked out today. Uh, you're still going to look at the league table and see us on 36 points and we're not even in the halfway stage of the season. So, yeah, it's it's shit, but there's just no, there's still no real need to, you know, jump to any conclusions, get annoyed and think Alan St. Maximin has been fighting Eddie Howe. <laughs> the <laughs> training ground. And like like we've said, just, just to wrap this one up, like we've said throughout this, Sheffield where and see a better team. They deserve to win yeah. that tonight. They they took their chances. We didn't at the end of I the mean, day. I mean, I say the better team. They say the better team. I'd, I'd use it. I'd use it loosely. Um, better team better in terms of. Goals. Better, <laughs> yeah, wanted, took their chances. Wanted it more. More efficient team. Wanted it more. Um, not a big believer in the XG thing, but Clark, I think, told us at the end of the game that our XG was at three at one point. Uh, you know, we've only ended up scoring one. Um, we we were really putting the pressure on in the second half, but they just what like Sotch just said. They wanted it more. It's just a case of well, when when teams sit off like that and defend, we don't have enough quality or enough quality players to to unpick really like a short short of defenses. I, I don't. We've, we've got, I don't even think they sat off until the last last fifteen twenty last, minutes. To yeah. be honest with you, yeah, you're right. You're right. But like that's that's when we're going for an equaliser, and it was you could see even Bruno was getting frustrated because there wasn't players making the runs that could you could have like played them in behind. So. I thought, to be honest, out of the because I know obviously it was people's chance to get a, a not a run in the team, but to show why they should stay a claim in the team. And I genuinely think Matt Ritchie was probably the the best of the players that have come in, um, mm-hmm. which I, I was was not expecting to say at all. But I thought, um, especially in the first half, I thought his link up play in the midfield was really really good. It's just disappointing that obviously the the other lads that got given the chance didn't didn't grasp it with both hands. Yeah, didn't capitalise the chances, to, to be fair, mate. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll end it there, unless anybody has anything else that they wish to get off the chest on this one, because now is your we'll, last chance. We'll just, we'll just win this, the FA Cup we'll next season. The book. We'll just yeah. win the FA Cup next season. We'll get the Carabao Cup this season, FA Cup next season, and Premier League season after. It's fine. Slowly build. Slow building slowly process build. is what they said. Yeah. And remember, whoever <laughs> shouts the loudest, shouts the loudest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Um, if you do want to like the video, by all means do so. Uh, even better if you can become a, a subscriber to the channel. helps us out massively. Uh, we're pushing for 10,000. Uh, we're not too far away from that. Um, if you want to give it a little bit extra, it's two ninety nine a month to become a member. You get early access to content like this, along with access to the Telegram group as well. But we will be back to business throughout the week. We've got less than on Tuesday, so we'll be um, doing a match preview for that one. All Smile and Faces podcast is back on Monday night as well. So plenty more to come. Watch what you're doing. See you later.